You still haven't grown out of that yet? It makes you want to punch them in the face. Uh, I, I know those kind of people. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge, much less friends who are also into it. That's how I feel about people who be like, all you do is play video games all day? Yeah, yeah, what's the problem? All you do is file other people's taxes all day. Fuck out of here. All you do is bag groceries all day. We both doing shit that don't really matter at the end of the day. People can go do their own taxes, quick, quick and loans, and people can go, y'all you know, get the point. Beef in the draw. Hold up, PG. I'm sorry. Look, doki doki literature. I'm finna reef and to get at her. Write her a poem. Say hello. I wanna get up in your throat. Whoa. I'm just trying to. Mm, mm, yeah. Y'all, it's some. Mm, mm. I said I wanna get in her throat because she want me to get in her throat. Look, look at look at her right here, y'all. Her right here. She want me to do some freaky freaky. What? Good job. Welcome back. Hey. Sorry, bro. I'm just having a great day right now. Welcome back to some Doki Doki Literature Club. We already know what we left off. I did try playing this on the live stream a few days back. So a few days back, me and my boy Joe was on here turned up off the Long Islands. That's the, that's the potion for the summer is the Long Island. We was trying to play a little bit of that on the live stream, but it was just not working out. I tried to make him do the voices. He wasn't really feeling the voices. So, I don't know if it's picking up from that spot, but as we play, we'll figure it out. Let's go. It doesn't happen much, but it is a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. Hold on, let me look at the history, though. Why this all of a sudden? No, not really. I just wanted to look at... Uh, so I was in and only two small coins. Oh, okay, so I just roasted her for being broke. Okay, so it's starting back a little bit earlier than I remember. That's fine. Now let me see, where does Yuri come in? Don't make me feel guilty! If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles, what? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is, o is in her books as always. <laughs> I wasn't listening or anything, it was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell Berlisi to let me borrow some money! That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should really only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after putting a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. You deserve it. Ah, did I just... I, I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Oh! <laughs> and I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's, there's no way you could think that. Here we go. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That! Still, coming from you, Sayori, I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? Whoa, whoa. Bro, why is, why is Yuri the, the, the baddest one? Though? Like, she, she could get all this work, and I'm not talking about homework, huh? Okay, they're in school, get it? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. B but you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> so devilish. What? What did you just do? Gah! Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Damn. Ow. What was... Eh? Uh? A cookie! <laughs> sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. That sounds fire right now. I would love a giant cookie wrapped in some plastic. Sayori glances around. I is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> Natsuki! That's so nice of you! I'm so happy! Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Why is Sayori so weird? Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Mm. Sayori suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. Oh, I bit my tongue! 
you're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? That one's fucking nasty ass raisin oatmeal raisin. Keep it. Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand. Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Sayori, chill! Can you imagine Sayori being all over you, still trying to bite your cookie after you told her no, and after you gave her one already? That's an uppercut. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? Oh, look at the way she got out of there. Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Huh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Y'all told me that my Monica Frieza voice was trash. Y'all didn't like me talking like Monica like this. Hello, my name is Monica. Y'all said it wasn't fitting. So this is gonna be Monica's voice. Let me think about this. Hey, guys. That's gonna be Monica. Hey, guys, welcome to the club, guys. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, who voice is that from, from Dagan? Put it in the comments. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't heard either. Hmm, that's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Huh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. A boyfriend? She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Hey, <laughs> that's true. Excuse me? Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys won't worry or anything. That's not really a popular girl voice, but it's going to be. She got them bazoongas. Damn. Huh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Ah, oh, I don't really. I kind of just started recently, <laughs> this voice. Ah, oh, I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That shh. Monica looks at me. Don't worry about me, I want to hear it. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. Yay! That sounds pretty cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Berlizzi. Monica, Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Just play the piano. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? No, mm, not really. I chose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade where she freaking tried to play me for money. She had two coins and then she took a bite of freaking Natsuki's co uh, cookie. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. Looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Of course she did. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Back here. Nice. Ah! Oh! I hear Natsuki's utter and exasperated sigh from within the closet. She seems to be annoyed by something. I approach her in case she needs a hand. Hold up, y'all. My sister calling me. That's so sweet! My sister wants to hang out with me! 
She like 30. She missed me. <laughs> I'm, I'm an impact on everybody's life, including yours. It's simultaneous though. Just like my sister called me and made me happy. Y'all make me happy when you come and watch my videos and click and say nice things to me. All right. You looking for something in there? Freaking Monica. She never puts my stuff back in the right spot. What's the point in keeping your collection organized if someone else is just gonna come mess it up? Atsuki slides a bunch of stacked books and boxes across the shelf. Manga. Oh, manga. You read manga, right? Uh, sometimes. Manga is one of those things where you can't admit you're really into it until you figure out what the other person stands. How did you know anyway? I heard you bring it up at some point. Besides, it's kind of written on your face. What's that supposed to mean? I, I see. There's a lone volume of manga amidst a stack of various books on the side of one of the shelves. Curious, I pull it out of the stack. There it is! Natsuki snatches it out of my hands. She then turns to a box of manga and slips the volume right into the middle of the rest. Okay, so she found the proper volume. Ah, much better! Seeing a box set with one book missing is probably the most irritating sight in the world. I know that Phil. I get a closer look at the box set she's admiring. Parfait Girls. It's a series I've never heard of in my life. That probably means it's either way out of my demographic or it's simply terrible. If you're gonna judge, you can go do it through the glass on the door. Oh, she's kicking me out, bruh. She points to the classroom door. Hey, I wasn't judging anything. I didn't even say anything. It was the tone of your voice. But I'll tell you one thing, Berlizzi. Consider this a lesson straight from the literature club. Don't judge a book by its cover. In fact, Natsuki pulls out the first volume of Parfait Girls from the box. I'm going to show you exactly why. She shoves the book right into my hands. Ugh. I stare at the cover. It features four girls in colorful attire, striking animated feminine poses. It's exceedingly mo. What the heck does that mean? Don't just stand there. Ugh. Natsuki grabs my arm and pulls me out of the closet. She then takes a seat against the wall beneath the window sills. She pats on the ground next to her, signaling me to sit there. Wouldn't chairs be more comfortable? I take my seat. Chairs wouldn't work. We can't read at the same time like that. Uh, why is that? Um, I guess it's easier to be close together like this. D don't just say that. You'll make me feel weird about it. Natsuki crosses her arm and scooches an inch away from me. Sorry. Damn, she, she, she tough. I didn't exactly expect to be sitting this close to her either. Not that I can say it's a particularly bad thing. Yeah, it's not a bad thing to sit next to a girl. You remind me of Mikado, just don't know what to do when the, when, the, when the signs are in front of you. I open the book. It's only a few seconds before Natsuki once again inches closer, reclaiming the additional space while she hopes I won't notice. I can feel her peering over my shoulder, much more eager to begin reading than I am. Wow, how long has it been since I read the beginning? Hmm? You don't go back and flip through the older volumes every now and then? Not really. Maybe sometimes after I've already finished the series. Hey, are you paying attention? Ugh, I am, but nothing's really happened yet, so I can talk at the same time. It looks like it's about a bunch of friends in high school. Typical slice of life affair. I kind of grew out of these since it's rare for the writing to be entertaining enough to make up for the lack of plot. So, what should I expect from this? Is there going to be plot? Is there going to be story? Are there going to be characters? Well, obviously, you think I would enjoy something that didn't have a plot? I mean, well, I guess I know what you're saying. A lot of the beginning is about simple things. Yeah, kind of like this game we're playing now. The last time I played this, I asked y'all, when does it get scary? But y'all was in the comments like, Berlizzi, please finish. It's gonna get way better. You just gotta get through the beginning part. Just keep reading though. Don't skip any parts because you're gonna, you're gonna ruin everything for yourself. Like this really funny chapter where they're obsessed with the guy at the ice cream shop, but that just helps you get to know the characters. And besides, it's still entertaining, but later on, there's all kinds of drama. Okay, I hope they're talking about this game. Like when they get into all their backstories and when some of the romance starts to happen, that's really what makes it so good. There are so many touching parts. Hmm, is that so? Sounds like you really know what you're talking about. Maybe I underestimated you. <laughs> hey, wait. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, uh, Natsuki gives me a little shove. Damn. 
I just meant that I haven't yet seen you at your full power. Huh, good save. Uh, this chapter seems like it's about baking. This is just a guess, but is there a lot of baking in this manga? Well, Natsuki pauses for a moment as if she doesn't want to admit something. <sighs> yeah, why does it matter? It doesn't, I was just curious. Since you enjoy baking too, right? That's just a coincidence. I just happened to get into baking around the same time I got this manga. Like I would, like I would ever get into anything because it's in a manga. I feel bad for anyone that impressionable. <laughs> Definitely not a coincidence. I guess that explains Nasuki's interest in baking. Still, of all the hobbies to pick up from a manga, that's definitely one of the better ones. Not to mention she's really good at it, so who am I to judge? Okay, she, okay, she a little cutie pie. We read on for a few more minutes. I finished a couple of chapters at this point. Hmm. Are you sure this isn't boring for you? It's not! Even though you're just watching me read? Well, I'm fine with that. If you say so. I guess it's fun sharing some, something you like with someone else. I always get excited when I convince any of my friends to pick up a series I enjoy. You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? You don't? Um, why your eyes shift like that? That was kind of creepy. I'm just waiting for something to pop out and scare me in the face, and I don't want that to happen this on such a good day as today. I'm having a great day, and then if this, if this girl shift her eyes back at me like that, it's gonna be a problem. That's not... Well, I wouldn't really know. What do you mean? Don't you share manga with your friends? Ugh! Could you not rub it in? Jeez. Oh, sorry. <laughs> like I could ever get my friends to read this. They just think that manga is for kids. I can't even bring it up with them without them being all like, eh, you still haven't grown out of that yet? It makes me want to punch them in the face. Ugh, I, I know those kind of people. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge, much less friends who are also into it. That's how I feel about people who be like, all you do is play video games all day? Yeah, yeah, what's the problem? All you do is file other people's taxes all day. Fuck out of here. All you do is bag groceries all day. We both doing shit that don't really matter at the end of the day. People can go do their own taxes, quick, quick and loans, and people can go, y'all you know, get the point. People will be like, man, you're not really working. It's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? If I'm not really working, what are you doing? Oh, cause you're sitting in front of a computer typing up? So am I. How are you finna judge me? You just mad cause I'm entertaining myself at the same time. That's your fault. You should have did something a little bit better for yourself. Don't hate me for my choices. I'm not hating you for yours, hello. All right. I'm already kind of a loser, so I guess I gravitated toward the other losers over time. But it's probably harder for someone like you. Hmm, yeah, that's pretty accurate. Wait, which part? I mean, I feel like I can't even keep it in my own room. I don't even know what my dad would do if he found this. At least it's safe here in the club room. Except Monica was kind of a jerk about it. Ugh, I just can't win, can I? Well, it paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am, reading it. Well, it's not like that solves any of my problems. Maybe, but at least you're enjoying yourself, right? Uh, uh, so? <laughs> you weirdo, I caught you in a lie. Jeez, that's enough. Are you gonna keep reading or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I flip the page. Suddenly, Natsuki starts laughing. <laughs> I totally forgot this happens. Natsuki puts her finger on one of the panels. Minori is my favorite character. You always feel a little bit bad for her since she's so unlucky. Sorry, y'all. I keep looking over in my, in my recordings. Let me just actually make sure. Okay, here we go. Here we go. But it gets especially bad when... Uh, I shouldn't be talking about that yet. Just finish this chapter. Natsuki's voice sparkles with excitement. It's a stark contrast to her usually bossy tone. But if she's not used to sharing her favorite manga with her friends, I can understand why. It's hard to express in words the feeling you get when you're connecting with someone like that. And being able to provide that to, Nas to Natsuki, for whom it's a rare experience, the thought makes me smile a little to myself. Okay, everyone! Huh? Are you all ready with today's poems? Mm. Oh, come on! Could your timing be any worse? Sorry! I just need to make sure we have enough time! Though you do look pretty cozy over there. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Natsuki suddenly notices how close she's gotten to me. 
She hastily slides herself a good 12 inches from me. Wow. All right. Guess I'll stop here for now. I close the book and hand it toward Natsuki. You're just giving it back? Don't you want to know what happens? Uh, yeah, but Monica just said, don't be dumb. Just take it home with you. Uh, is that really all right? I said that mostly because I really didn't plan on using my spare time to read this bull. Well, of course. It would take forever to finish if you didn't take it home. Just finish that one before tomorrow so we can start the next one. And if it gets bent, I'll kill you. By tomorrow? I only got part way through the volume so far. I might fall behind on some shows if I try to get through this. But I suppose that's a necessary sacrifice in exchange for seeing Natsuki's enthusiastic face. Oh, Berlizia, Berlizia uh, a, a real one for this. That's how I need to be looking at this. But I suppose I should sacrifice uh, uh, my time that I spend recording in exchange for seeing happy and grateful comments in the videos that I post. Because sometimes I'll be, I'll be sitting there and I'm like, man, I got to record today. But Stranger Things is heating up. <sighs> Let me record, though. That's what that's literally my feeling today. I'm starting Stranger Things over from the first season, so yeah. Great show. Or am I more scared of what will happen if I don't finish it? Alright then. I stand up. I return to where I put my stuff and carefully slip the book into my bag. <sighs> Who should I show my poem to first? I think we should share it with Sayori because I wrote it with her in mind. Let's do it. Berlizzi! I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Uh, I'm not hiding anything, but your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one too. You can tell me, you can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the only one who feels that way. So. <laughs> huh? No way, not even Natsuki? Well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much she likes something, but I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Uh, uh? Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just mean that you're a really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking! Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so, yeah. I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. We have that kind of a weird connection. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. Huh? I don't know if I understand. Oh my gosh. You never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? I pat Sayori's head. <laughs> I'm not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Mmm, maybe. Sayori so starts fiddling with their pencil between her hands. Hey, Berlizzi, will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Huh? Why? Because, well, it's the first time you've written something for me. <laughs> Sayori, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. I wrote this through you. <laughs> Are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, I broke my pencil. So Yori hastily bends down to pick up the pieces she dropped. But being inattentive of her surroundings, she bumps right into me. She backed that booty right up into me. She knows she did. Sorry. It's fine. It's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sayori clutches the desk beside her to support herself, knees shaking. I, I am a little clumsy today. <laughs> Let's sit down, Sayori. Y yeah! I grab Sayori's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Uh oh! S sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. Here we go. Bottles. Okay, pop bottles. I pop off my scalp like the, like the little of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I thought it said I could click it, okay. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. 
but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle is starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Aww. She gives her bottles to her friends to make them happy. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my fingers go. Like exploring a cave. Wait, what? Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like the time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They are all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo. Inside my head. Holy crap. Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you, right? That sounded like a Yuri poem. That, that got kind of dark, dark and morbid towards the end. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, I mean, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, oh, thanks. I feel like, I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten really passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. So you always, always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. All right, Sayori, you're, you're a little weird with that one. Let's talk to Monica. Hi, Gambrilishi. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're just applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Mm. All right, I like it, Berlici. Really? It's, it's a lot cuter than I expected. <laughs> oh, gee. <gasps> Sorry, y'all, I just, I just smashed a bottle of water a few minutes ago and like it's still working its way through my body. I'll, I'll, I'll chase it with some coffee, hold on. Oh, jeez. No, no, no. I, it kind of makes me think of something Natsuki would write. And she's a good writer, too. So take that as a compliment. <laughs> if you say so. Yep. By any chance, have you read anything by Shel Silverstein? <laughs> Shel Silverstein? Huh? Maybe a long time ago. He's famous for telling all kinds of stories in just a few simple words. His poems can be fun, endearing, or even sad. And sometimes they're only a few lines long. They might even feel like they're written for kids, but if you think about them, they can, even, they can express views of the world that, that will only apply to anybody. That would apply to anybody. <clears throat> I see. So you're saying that Natsuki... No, sorry. <clears throat> so you're saying that Natsuki is kind of like that? Sort of. Maybe she's not an expert, but you probably won't find much filler in her poems. They might be easy to write, but they're super challenging to get the meaning through. So I can see why it would be your kind of poem to explore. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. <clears throat> my poem is called, Shave Me. <clears throat> the colors, they won't stop. 
bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, an endless co- cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing. Shin, cosine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust, an endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Load me. What? Load me. Something about that phrase right there is just giving me some real dirty vibes, bro. Like, like load goes in the same family of words I don't like, like moist, clean, clang. They, they all are in the same family right now. Moist, load, clean, clang. What's another word that's just nasty to say? I don't know, bro. There's, there's a family of them, though. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just a kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what's about what it's about, though. Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Not even finna play with y'all right now. Not even finna play with y'all right now. Not even finna play with y'all right now. You never know what you might change. You never know when you might change your mind, or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Who should I show my poem to next? Uh, I can use a little breathing break. So let's go with uh, Natsuki. I like her. Her, her voice is like less breaths to, to share. Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me, then back at the poem. By now, she must have read it more than once. Aren't you supposed to be bad at this? Is that a compliment? N no, I mean, you know. Natsuki struggles to find the words she wants. I just expected a lot less after what you showed me yesterday. That's all. Well, I guess I just got lucky with this one. Y yeah, exactly. You just got lucky, you know? Don't get used to it. You won't always manage to write poems as cute. I mean, I mean, I mean, well written. No, I, I mean, ah, uh, so that's how it is. My poem is cute. No, why are you smiling? It's not like I like cute things. Natsuki shoves my poem back towards me. <clears throat> Reading it again, I decided that it's not so great after all. It's too cute and doki doki. Ah, uh, foreshadowing. It would only impress, you know, girls who like these those kind of things. <laughs> For some reason, Natsuki is incredibly easy to see through. Well, anyway, you're gonna read mine now, right? Judging by your taste, you'll probably like it a lot. You'll probably learn something too. Don't forget who the real pro is. I like her font too. <clears throat> My poem is called Amy Likes Spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, funk booty, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words, but she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. <laughs> it doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. 
The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Natsuki, I don't even like you no more after this poem. Yup, this poem just showed a lot about yourself. This is like saying, Amy is the perfect person in the world, but because she likes sp spiders, f Amy. You can say the same thing about, so because Amy is black, f Amy. So because Amy uh, comes from another country, f Amy, huh? Piss off. Piss off, Natsuki. You better explain yourself for this. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Uh, yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies, and it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject matter of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about how everyone thinks my- That doesn't matter, it can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid of people will find out. They'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes? As long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. Okay, so maybe Natsuki is being Amy in her poem, which would make me like Natsuki again. I thank you for explaining. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important, but I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow too, so look forward to it. <laughs> all right, Yuri, you're up. Yuri. Don't be weird with it though, please. Ah, uh, is it my turn? Let's see how it compares to yesterday's. Mmm, I see. It's a bit different. I respect you for trying different things, Berlizzi. Were you inspired by Natsuki's poem? Or Sayori's, perhaps? Well, I guess you could say that. I thought so. I'm happy for you. You don't need to find inspiration in my poems. I write them for myself. Not for anyone else, so I don't really need for people to like them or anything. Yuri! Uh, uh huh? I'm, I'm sorry for being blunt, but you're overthinking this a little. Just because our styles are different doesn't mean I dislike your poems. In fact, if I try to do something in your style, I would probably just do a terrible job. I, I see. I, I'm sorry. My stupid mind, it likes to do that sometimes. Anyway. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more darling. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you say and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have um, well, an, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. All right, Yuri. Yuri, you be going in on these poems, bro. You gotta chill. Let's see. So my poem today is called The Raccoon. It happened in the dead of the night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside of my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom, the bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge, the moon, and cr hold up, hold up. Okay. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same, the very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon is taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. 
Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Parpovolian conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. What? I don't even want to know what that poem was about, bro. I don't even want to know. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. Yeah, I can see that. You're a weirdo. It's a lot more uh, metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. I'm so glad that the character Berlizzi in this game is the same Berlizzi playing, because I'm kind of confused and I don't really want to know or guess, because y'all would be like, you're in, this is you in the comments. Berlizzi, that's not what the poem is about at all. You're really a dumbass when you play some of these games, but I still watch you because you're funny. I'm a thumbs up, but still, you're a dumbass. Easy gang, I love you, bitch. Like, what the fuck? <clears throat> That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean, bruh. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So, I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Huh, that's funny. Hmm? Did Natsuki also write about something about that? About someone being ridicule for a strange interest? Uh huh. She, she did? Yeah, she did. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She, she's right. I, I mean... Does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. That, well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Uh, please don't tell her I said that. <laughs> don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay, well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. Facts. I feel like that's one of the main reason people get depressed is because I'll speak for myself when I'm not honest with myself and then something happens bad as a result of that whether it be my relationships with other people my relationships with myself and like as a result of me not being honest with myself bad things happen I blame myself which makes me not want to talk to anybody and close up like a little turtle shell but when I'm honest with myself and with others, and I express that, it's like depression, right? Is the opposite of expression. So express yourself. That's why all these rappers right now are doing that with their music. And people will be like, bro, this music is sad. It's, it's gay, derogatory gay. I'm not saying that as me. I'm saying what people feel. I can't understand it. This shit is soft, but it's like, but like I'm expressing myself and those same critiques are what make me want to close up in the first place. So all these new rappers coming out singing about like sad topics, I don't think it's about them feeling that way or like promoting death or sadness or suicide even. It's to show people like you're not alone, express yourselves too. What I think needs to happen with some of these people is you gotta express yourselves but then offer a solution outside of that. Like you can't just be like, I'm sad, I wanna die, 14, 14. And then be like, all right guys, thanks for buying my music. I'll see you later. I'm gonna go enjoy my, my money and go to the island. You gotta be like, what do you do with those feelings? You know what I'm saying? That's all. I'm stepping off my soapbox. <clears throat> I, I might be ranting a little bit now. No, I just, I just ran it too. So you're all right, Yuri. But I'm glad that you're a good listener. All right. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today. So if you, if everyone could come sit at the front of the, at the, yep. Is this about the festival? Well, sure, Dove. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Shayori has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. 
Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Expression, see, there you go. Performing. P um, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Shayo is putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't. You didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no, but it's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. Uh, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Shayori, I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kinda overlooked that, so I'm sorry. But I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right! And it's those reasons, and it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share with that other? <laughs> Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the same place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if, it, and if all the taste is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right. Phew, thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone! You're the best, Yuri! This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh! You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N -n -n no way. Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh, no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Fly, The Fly, The Way They Fly. Sorry, y'all. Ahem. <clears throat> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Just like I do when I be playing these reading games. If y'all don't, if y'all don't give me these thumbs up on these reading games, I'm gonna be looking at y'all like, wow. So y'all think my, my flow is boo boo when it comes to this? I need y'all to poo. I need y'all to shamu poo on the like button right now. I need to see at least what. This video, these videos be getting tens of thousands of views. I need to see at, like, at least 10,000 likes on this video. Like the video right now. Go down there and like the video right now. Appreciate it. Is this something she's done before or is she simply a natural? I glance around at me. 
Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the reci the reci the recitation. Is that a word? The four of us applaud. It was fire. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That that was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I I'll go next. Ah, Yuri's, Yuri's filled up all of a sudden, fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri! It's called... After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. Okay, Yuri! The poem is full of twists and turns and its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the, whir the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside of her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her, as if she's bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Okay, okay, Berlizzi, there you go. Everyone joins me afterward, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm up next then. Sayori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. Sorry, I was looking at how long I've been recording. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> uh, Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? I keep getting the voices kind of mixed up. Ah. Try not to think of it like you're reciting it to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best what? It'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow, it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. We didn't even get the title of it though. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she'd like my poem. She, she likes my poem, sorry. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. <laughs> even Berlizzi liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean, girl? It came out nicely, Sayori. The, at the atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Huh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean! That's... Well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know? Okay! Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. <laughs> don't make me go before Berlizzi. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Berlizzi lower everyone's stands a little bit before I have to do it. Damn. Natsuki? It's fine, it's fine. I'm not calling her a bitch because she's a female. Had she been a, ma a male and he said that, I would have fried him with a bitch too. So don't get on me talking about you're your, I, I attacking women. I love women. I respect women. I was raised by three of them. Mom, two sisters. Dad, I love you too, Pops. You know, we had the childhood and we rekindled in that fire as an adult. I'm asking you all types of grown-up questions. You there for me. Yo, Pops, this is for you.
No homo though. I might as well get it over with, but it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. Look at their eyes gazing at me one by one. Why did she seem so unimpressed the f out of here? I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time though. Yeah, maybe. All oh, right then, that just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called, it's called, why are y'all looking at me like that? Because you're presenting. Hmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. <sighs> Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm to it, a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. Sorry, y'all. Ah. The words feel like they're, they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Ah, oh, well, did you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people, but when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so. Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what's, what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait! I can do this. I can do this. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Berlizzi? Oh, sorry. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep! Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys, you wanna back off? Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Berlisi, you don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. I'm fucking hungry and I wanna watch Dragon Ball. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed, but today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Oh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. The poem, huh? I like how we get to, I, I mean, Sayori fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day, Natsuki asked to walk home with you. Huh? Oh, she getting jealous a little bit. She getting a little jealous right now. What would you do? What kind of question is that? You kind of put me on the spot here. <laughs> Ooh, well, we gonna make this the second file, just in case, y'all. I would walk home with Natsuki. I would still walk home with Sayori. Why? Why can't there be a third option for she can join us? 
I don't know if I want to walk home with Natsugi. I feel like... So this is the thing with like mean girls that I've learned is like they be acting like that because they secretly like you. But it's a turn on for me because I know like with other people that they don't like, they're a savage biatch. So for her to be a little nice towards me, like I had this one girl, I'm not gonna name her name, but it rhymes with, with Claudia. And she would always be mean to everybody, but like, she kind of liked me a little bit because she thought it was cute, you know what I'm saying? And so like, she was like friendly to me, but like she was still kind of distant. And so like, I've been like trying to chip away at that wall. But eventually over time I was like, man, you can keep the wall, but it was still kind of cool. So like, when answering this question, no, I'm still walking home with you, Sayori. You're a way better friend and girl than Natsuki still. Sayori, you really think I would ditch you for Natsuki? Uh, but she's so cute and, and fun to be around. Jeez, I already see her in the club every day and she's still annoying. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Berlizzi. You think about me too much sometimes. Natsuki would deserve it if she wanted to. Sayori, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Huh? The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about, but I want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? Alright, we're gonna save it right there, over at the first save file. I'm gonna try and do my outro to this beat, look. Alright, check it out. Yo, that's part two for Doki Doki. I had that you great, had a great time with my jokey jokies. I'm finna peace out. I love each and every one of you. Hit that like button on your way out, a way out. Gotta play that next. Me and PG deleted all them, uh... We gotta check on them save files, cause it's been quite a while. A way out, PG, what you think? Put it right here in the text if you think it would be a good game. Let me know. Is that a yes or a no? Hold up. More videos to come. Bully dangin' in this one. I even got Uncharted. I'ma start at part two, cause the first one is trash. I'm finna blast. Peace and love. I'll see you next time. Alright, so I love each and every one of you. Yeah, you. Thank you for hanging out again. Leave a, th leave a thumbs up on this video if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next video, y'all. Peace. Have a good one. Maybe I'm